Okay, welcome to our mini lecture on preparing financial statements. And I'm going to take you through uh, from a list of accounts to preparing a trial balance, then an income statement, statement of return earnings, and balance sheet. We're using a, a document in Google Docs which is available to you, and I'll put the link in the description of the video. If uh, you haven't watched our Introduction to Financial Accounting video, please watch that. I think it'll help you uh, get a good basis for preparing the financial statements. So first step, we have Lizzie Incorporated at December 31st, 2010. Here's a list of accounts. We don't know if they're debits or credits. We total them up to $91,778. Next thing we're going to do is prepare our trial balance. Again, this is Lizzie Incorporated. Now this is a formal statement or formal document that, that's part of our accounting records. So we've headed it up properly. And I've got all the same accounts that are on the list of accounts, but now I've broken them out between debit and credit. Uh, normally on a trial balance you will not see this amount column. It doesn't hurt anything. I'm using it for uh, demonstration purposes here. You should be perfectly able to break down your accounts into their natural account balance at this time. Um, if you're still struggling with that, is cash an asset, is an asset a debit or credit, you need to go back and watch that first video and make sure that your memorization is down perfectly. But here you see that our debits equal our credits, $45,889. If they don't balance, then you can't go any further. The trial balance is the basis for preparing the financial statements. If you have an error in it, it means that you've made an error in a journal entry recording a transaction that your debits didn't equal your credits. Something's wrong and you've got to go back and fix it before you can go forward. So let's go on to the income statement. First statement that we're going to prepare, we have to do these in order. Income statement, statement of return to earnings, balance sheet, statement of cash flows. And we're not going to do the cash flows here. Uh, normally that's something that's done later on in accounting one. And I've got a video on that uh, on uh, YouTube as well if you'd like to watch that later. But here we've used from the trial balance uh, the sales account of 21000 cost of goods sold, which is an expense of 18839 to come up with net income of 2161 I want you, when you're preparing all of these financial statements, I want you to tick these numbers off. See, there's my sales. I want you to actually physically write a tick mark next to that so you know that you've used it. Same thing with cost of goods sold. We're going to use every number on the trial balance in one of these three financial statements that we're preparing, income statements, statement of return, in, return earnings, or balance sheet. So now here's our income statement again. Um, okay, let's look at the income statement. Here's our income statement. We have net income of 2,161. Let's move on to the statement of retained earnings. Notice just like on the statement of income, our statement of retained earnings is for the year ended December 31st, 2010. That heading is going to match for the income statement, uh, statement of retained earnings, and the statement of cash flows. Only the balance sheet is going to be a little bit different. It's a, it's a snapshot in time. But here's our, our statement of retained earnings. We have beginning retained earnings that came from the trial balance. It's zero because this is the first year of operations for Lizzie. Uh, net income, 2,161. Where did that come from? It came from the income statement. We couldn't have done this statement of retained earnings without it. Dividends, that came from the trial balance also. We, Lizzie Inc. didn't pay any dividends this year. Therefore, her ending retained earnings are $2,161. We're going to use that number over here on the balance sheet. You notice on, I can cursor down, the uh, uh, starting with, uh, and I'll go down as soon as that cursor's down in a moment, Let's take a look at the heading. This is Lizzie Inc., the classified balance sheet at December 31st, 2010. The, uh, we've got it broken out between assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Now here's the, uh, the retained earnings section. That came from the statement of retained earnings, $2,161. We're going to use all of the accounts that are left over on the trial balance. Because remember, everything is going to be used. So we start with our assets. We put cash. Accounts payable, prepaid insurance. That's always a tricky one in accounting one, making sure that a prepaid is a current asset. We've totaled up our current assets of $21,250. Uh, our total assets, after we've added in property, plant, and equipment net, so we've netted the accumulated depreciation in there, $27,050. Accounts payable, long-term debt, these come from the trial balance. We've totaled up our liabilities. 
We, and then we have our total of stockholders equity, which included the retained earnings from the statement of retained earnings. The very last thing we do is we total up the liabilities and stockholders equity. And just like the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. I hope this has been a nice uh, uh, little review for you. This is a, a good way to practice learning how to do financial statements. Uh, something else you can do is go back to the step one tab and put in another journal entry. Say for instance that Lizzie needs to accrue her electricity bill of $200. That's going to increase accounts payable by $200. It's going to increase utilities expense by $200. That's going to flow through all these financial statements. So good luck on preparing your financial statements. I want you to get an A in accounting one. Study hard. If you, if you mastered preparing these financial statements and all of your memorization, you're in a very good position for getting an A in this class.